Be sure to follow us on TikTok at MysticSage1 for daily anime content. Dragon Ball, one of my most favorite series of all time. Dragon Ball has always had plenty of action involved in it. One of the greatest parts of the action was most definitely the techniques that the Z fighters or the villains used. They were unique finishing moves or powerful attacks that were unique to each character or characters. These moves were always used during an epic fight or even just to demonstrate power. Dragon Ball is just amazing with these moves, and today I wanted to count down what I consider to be the best moves in Dragon Ball. At a later point, I would be down to discuss the strongest moves in Dragon Ball, so let me know down below if you'd be interested in that. With that said though, let's hop into these badass attacks. Starting off this list, we have Tien Shinon's Tri-Beam. Tien has used Tri-Beam quite a few times in Dragon Ball and in Z, but by far one of my favorite instances of him using this attack was definitely when he used it against Semi-Perfect Cell. Cell insults Tien and calls him a no-count, and Tien is like, nah bro, here's a gift from the no-count. The dude then spams Tri-Beam to buy time for Android 18 and 16 to escape. Tien shouts, Tri-Beam HA! And Cell is taken into a huge hole and begins being blasted over and over. Tien is underestimated sometimes, and it sucks that he is. Tien's a badass, and Tri-Beam is by far one of my favorite moves in Dragon Ball. Give some respect to Tien. Coming in at number 9 is another that comes from the Crane School being Solar Flare. We actually see Solar Flare being used in very strategic and stally kind of ways. The first time we see it is from Tien in Dragon Ball at the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament where he attempts the technique on Jackie Chun. It fails though because he is wearing sunglasses. Goku, however, uses it against Tien in the 23rd tournament, which affects everyone and the announcer. During Z, Solar Flare is still a very handy move. We see Krillin use it against Dodoria so that he and Gohan are able to run away. It's a very handy move to get out of sticky situations. I'm glad that it's still relevant today as well. Such a great attack to have. Heading over to the villain side of Dragon Ball, number 8 kicks off with Death Beam. This is Frieza's signature attack that he uses to finish anyone off or just to prove a point. Death Beam is just a small energy beam from Frieza's fingertips, but despite it being so small, it's so deadly. I have seen so many characters in Dragon Ball die to Death Beam, and every time Frieza uses it, it just makes him look even more cool. I will admit though, I was a little sad when he used it against Vegeta to finish him off. Regardless though, Frieza is a savage, and Death Beam definitely belongs to him. Number 7 goes to Gallic Gun. Who doesn't remember the first time Goku and Vegeta had their first energy clash? Gallic Gun was Vegeta's equivalent of the Kamehameha wave, and boy did it pack a punch. It took Goku a times 4 Kaioken Kamehameha to knock back Vegeta's Gallic Gun. I also just like the fact it's like a pinkish purplish color, and purple also happens to be my favorite color. It's sad we don't see Vegeta use Gallic Gun a lot, but I guess he does have cooler attacks now. Gallic Gun is definitely underrated. Closing out the first half of this list is Piccolo's Hellzone Grenade. The first time we see this is against his fight with Android 17. Essentially what Hellzone Grenade is, it's just a bunch of energy blasts in the air that traps the enemy inside. Piccolo misses his blasts to have all the energy cave around 17, and once he is done blasting, he moves his arms and all the blasts come together for one humongous explosion. Piccolo needs more time in Super. He's so underrated, and his attacks are also underrated. Speaking of Piccolo again, starting the second half of the list is Special Beam Cannon. This attack is by far Piccolo's signature move. The first time we see it was against Raditz. Goku had to hold off his brother for a certain amount of time for Piccolo to charge this attack. Charging my attack. It takes a while to charge, but God was this attack powerful when he used it. No doubt, Special Beam Cannon was a very powerful weapon to have during the Saiyan Saga. Raditz being as powerful as he was at the time wasn't even able to take it. I remember how it just drilled right into his stomach. The first time, Piccolo does miss his Special Beam Cannon, but the way how Raditz screams, All right, Green Man, let's see what you got! And Piccolo says, It's all yours, Special Beam Cannon! Gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. Next, we have one from our favorite Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta. I went over Gallic Gun earlier, but for this entry, I'm talking about the infamous Big Bang attack. I don't recall Vegeta using this attack often, but the first time we saw him use it was to finish off Android 19. 
It's just a simple, huge energy ball that causes an explosion. A fun little aspect I really liked about Big Bang as well was from Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fury on the Game Boy Advance. You could charge up Big Bang and it would just be a big blue ball that would go across the screen. That game was one of my favorites on the Game Boy Advance, including Legacy of Goku 2. Here's a classic you have to know even if you aren't a Dragon Ball fan. Even for non-anime fans, you know Kamehameha. We all pretended at school to be Goku, we would run up to people and do it. Come on, you know you did it too. But despite kids, myself included, being a huge geek, Kamehameha is the most popular attack in the Dragon Ball series, and it's the most iconic. It took Master Roshi 50 years to master it, and it took Goku, well, two minutes. What's most iconic about Kamehameha, though, is that how many times it's been used to save the world. For example, we had the fight with Goku and Vegeta, where Goku unleashed a times 4 KO Ken and Kamehameha, and then there was the father-son Kamehameha with Gohan and Cell. Each time you saw or heard Kamehameha, you can't tell me you didn't get goosebumps. Oh, and there's also the Warp Kamehameha, where Goku Blue sells torso off. That one has to be one of my favorites for sure. Up at the penultimate spot, we have Final Flash. Vegeta, being my favorite character of course, one of his techniques had to make it this high. Final Flash was used the first time against Perfect Cell. Cell was super confident that Vegeta couldn't touch him, and though he was right to a degree, Vegeta did manage to shake him at least. The Saiyan Prince powered up for at least 5 minutes, making the ground shake, lightning bolts go everywhere, and curling in trunks screaming at him to stop. Did he though? Hell no! But unfortunately, he got smacked. Poor Prince. He used it again a few other times, but it's definitely not as iconic as the first time. You may be asking though, if Vegeta's your favorite character, why isn't Final Flash number one? Well, you'll see soon enough. At the number one spot, we have Freeze's attack, Supernova, or his huge energy ball that can blow up planets with a finger. Frieza is a straight up savage and literally had the power to destroy worlds at his fingertips so easily. He annihilated the entirety of the Saiyan race in a very short amount of time. Honestly, I just love Frieza and the fact he uses this attack so casually makes it the best in Dragon Ball Z by far. Well, that wraps up what I consider to be the top 10 best attacks in Dragon Ball. These attacks are all really iconic and have definitely spiced Dragon Ball up one way or the other. Of course though, that's only my opinion and I'm sure you guys have some really good ones out there as well. After all, Dragon Ball has a lot of amazing attacks, and I'm sure I will agree with you on whatever attacks you like, so let me know down below which ones are your favorite. With that said though, I'm Mystic Sage, and I will see you in the future for more awesome anime content.